In Stargate, some of the most epic scenes happen in space, although the majority of the show stays grounded and focuses on personal combat or story-driven conflicts. There are some truly awesome battles in the Stargate franchise. Here are what I believe to be the top five of those battles. Just a warning, spoilers for SG-1, Atlantis, and Universe are coming up in this video, so if you don't want to hear them, then leave now. Coming in at number 5, we have Atlantis vs. the ZPM-powered Super High. This battle takes place at the end of Season 5 of Stargate Atlantis, in Episode 20, Enemy at the Gate. In this episode, we discover that Todd, a wraith whom we've known quite well, stole more ZPMs from the Replicator homeworld than he let on. Of course, they were stolen by one of his lieutenants, who subsequently decided to use them to his own advantage. Todd's buddy then uses at least one ZPM to modify a Wraith Hive ship to near indestructible defensive capabilities, seriously upgrading the weapons, and, turn and he turned the hyperdrive into an intergalactic version capable of attacking Earth. To make a long story short, this hive disables the Daedalus, the Apollo, and the Sun Tzu before making its way to Earth. In the climactic fight, Atlantis, piloted by Dr. Beckett, uses the city's wormhole drive to jump to Earth at the 11th hour, just in time to give Shepard's team enough time to plant a nuke on board the hive and gate to safety. At number 4, we have Stargate SG-1, the battle with Anubis over Antarctica. This epic battle takes place between the ultimate system lord, Anubis, and the fledgling power of the Earth in the episode The Lost City Part 2, which is the climactic season finale of Season 7. The build-up to this battle occurs over the span of a two-episode blitz in which SG-1, led by Colonel Jack O'Neill, attempts to thwart an oncoming attack by their sworn enemy, the half-ascended ancient, half old Anubis. Basically, the show is kicked off when Jack decides to once again have the entire ancient repository of knowledge downloaded into his brain. This was, of course, in an attempt to gain knowledge of the ever-elusive Lost City of the Ancients. While SG-1 races to a planet known as Proclarouche Teonas, to find a ZPM and make it back to Earth, only to reveal that the city that Dr. Jackson has been looking for has been on Earth the whole time, under the ice in Antarctica. With a modified transporter beam, Colonel O'Neill starts to bore a hole through a mile of ice in an attempt to reach the ancient weapon below, only to see a squadron of death gliders at Elkash coming over the horizon. When all hope seemed lost, General Hammond comes riding in on the Prometheus, the only spaceship that Earth has, and an entire squadron of F-302s, led by the daring Lieutenant Colonel Mitchell. In the climactic battle that ensues, General Hammond's forces are able to hold off Anubis long enough for SG-1 to reach the weapon and Colonel O'Neill to use it to destroy Anubis's massive fleet and save Earth. Coming in at number 3, we have Stargate Universe, Destiny vs. the Berserker Drones. This battle takes place in, ep in Season 2, Episode 11, Deliverance. To make a long story short, the crew of the Destiny has been plagued by the Berserker Drones an automated attack force of killer spaceships for some time now. In this battle, Destiny is up against almost impossible odds, until Chloe escapes her room and sends out Destiny's location to her alien friends, the Nakai, a species of aliens that seem to have an unhealthy obsession with Destiny. The Nakai show up in the nick of time, causing enough of a distraction for Destiny to attack the control ship, of course, and they are only able to succeed in this battle because Eli was able to temporarily disable the drones sitting between Destiny and the control ship. In the end, the good guys win, and they live happily ever after. Sort of. Coming in at number 2, we have Stargate SG-1, the Ori Invasion at the Supergate. This battle takes place in the episode Camelot, which is the Season 9 finale. This battle takes place at the mouth of the newly discovered Ori Supergate. A defensive force comprised of Jaffa, Tari, and Asgard assembled at the Supergate in an attempt to repel the Ori invasion force that they are certain is coming. The massive defense fleet was comprised of two BC-304 Daedalus-class ships from Earth, the Odyssey and the Korolev, ten Hatak-class Gwauld motherships commanded by the Frigifa nation, and one O'Neill-class Asgard warship. Despite the size of the defense fleet, when the four Ori ships came through the gate, it was almost immediately obvious that the Asgard, Tori, and Jaffa were severely outclassed. The Ori ships had shields that couldn't even be penetrated by Asgard weapons, and weapons that could uh, destroy a fully functional Hatak in one shot. Halfway through the battle, Teal'c showed up with three Lucian Alliance Hataks to flank the Ori, but it was to no avail. 
At the end of the very short yet intense battle, only the Odyssey and one of the Lucian Alliance Hatox remain standing. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Stargate Atlantis, the battle over Azurus. By far my favorite space battle in all of Stargate, this epic battle takes place in the episode Be All My Sins Remembered, which is the 11th episode in Season 4 of Stargate Atlantis. The build-up to this battle took place over several weeks, as the Daedalus and the Apollo had been hunting down and destroying the replicator ships across the Pegasus Galaxy. After several successful attacks, the replicators started to get worried and pulled all of their ships back to their home planet to protect their fleet. Seeing the unique opportunity to wipe out all of the replicators at once, the good guys decide to make an alliance. With the help of Todd, they are able to enlist seven Wraith Hive ships along with their escorts to help them fight. In addition to this, Shepard was able to negotiate with the Travelers, who agreed to send six Traveler ships as well as their one Aurora-class battlecruiser. Basically, the plan was to hold the replicators off long enough for Rodney to beam down to the planet, activate a weapon, and destroy all of the replicators. Although McKay runs into some trouble on the surface, there are quick, they are quickly able to make a new plan that doesn't include detonating all of the replicators and peons, and ends up destroying the entire planet along with all the replicators and their ships. Or so they thought. Well, that does it for this list. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you agree, or if you have any additions for your own list that you would like to add, feel free to tell me in the comments below. If you like this content and would like to see more, be sure to subscribe. In any case, thank you for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.